everyone, it's me Cheryl. I hope you're all alright. It's been another long time, hasn't it, since I last did a video. I have a couple of things to show you. Works in progress and a couple of finished items, although I think some of you uh, might have seen... Oh, the finished items already, yeah. I just haven't shown it on video, that's what it is. So what am I going to say first? Um, I've started my husband's sock. I'll just show you this so far. You can see how nice this yarn's coming out. Yeah. How lovely is that? It's Katia, the yarn, and I can't remember what colour or anything. It's on the yarn label, which is downstairs. I've just brought everything up here to shoot a video. Um, so I've done the, the rib and the um, calf and I've done the first wedge because I'm doing the uh, sweet tomato heel by Kath Bordy. Cat Bordy. I've done that before. I've not called Kath before. Cat Bordy. Um, so that's the first wedge and I've got another two wedges to go before I start on the foot. So it's coming out really nice and I love that yarn. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So really happy with that. Oh, and I, I got the um, lace. This is why I wanted the lace needle because I've been working on nine inch needles which is fine for just going round and round and the very first time I did that um, sweet tomato heel on my son's socks I did them on DPNs and the stitches because of what I was doing with them they weren't evenly distributed well they were for what I was doing but not for the needles themselves and I felt it was awkward so I felt a circular needle would be better and of course you can't get interchangeable circular needles below is it three millimeters and this is 2.5 so i had to get lace one and i just made sure to get one with a, a long cord so i could do the the wedges and it works fine enough now some of you may have been where yeah i did show this in the video last time um Got this jumper. I was in the process of sewing it up, and you might have seen it finished on Facebook, not Facebook, Instagram. Um, it's a prototype, and I learnt so much from doing this. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I learned what to sew up first and what not to sew up first. I learnt to do the ribs by hand because this is just dying. Mm, can you see that? Looks like it's bleached at the moment. I just cannot do connect ribs, the rib stitch without it looking awful. Whereas the side seams are absolutely fine. Can't see. So I did learn a lot from that, and that was the whole idea of um, this. So with that in mind, I um, I've done one of my nephew's jumpers, and I've finished that now, and here it is. Isn't that wonderful? Although, if you can spot the obvious, don't say anything. I know. I know. Yes, I know I should have started another skin of yarn doing the second sleeve. Rather than just continuing because it doesn't match up. I know. I know. Don't say anything. Hopefully, it'll just be okay anyway. But yes, doing the ribs by hand saved me the problem on the side. No problem there. Seaming up was great. Um, and following Diana Sullivan's how to do the uh, raglan sleeve, so I said it, sew it up, sew up there first before going up, up the raglan piece. That worked a treat. Um, so for the next jumper, what I'm definitely going to do next time is do all the ribs first before all the sewing. Ribs, I mean this um, sleeves and the bottom and then do the sewing. Um, yeah, I learnt a lesson there as well. So I did learn something from this as well. So I was quite happy with that. And this will be the colour of the next jumper for his brother, um, who's a bit taller. So it's a different size jumper. It's only marginal. Just talking about, it's more on the length than the width. Um, not so much on the width, a little bit on the bottom, but the neck, when you reach the neck, it's the same. But it's the length that's the main difference. 
Yeah. So to do those jumpers, um, the one I've just finished, the green one, and the one I'm doing, I'm using, um, I'm going to do next, wait, the one I'm going to do next, I'm using Sweater 101 by Cheryl Brunette and there's my patterns and on the back there, my calculations, I did a, I spent a day in total silence, number crunching, doing all the, because just on your gauge, so it doesn't matter what needle size or whether you use a knitting machine or whatever, what yarn you use, it's on your gauge and it's absolutely fantastic. From there, you, do, you fill in the schematics, you do all the calculations and all that at the back is um, basically the calculations for the um, the tapering because these are the same on the sleeve and the top of the jumper they're the same but where it differs is on the front where you're also doing the neck neck decreasing so doing that as well as taper it, it's, it's difficult it's challenging not difficult it's, it's okay you have to really think about it and you've got to think about it before you do it especially when you're doing all the calculations yourself so I'll be working on that one next which is slightly different to this only numbers wise the technique is exactly the same it was fantastic I thoroughly enjoyed doing them though all the number crunching I was just really in the zone it was fantastic and I felt so accomplished when I finished it well I said I, I learned so much from doing that jumper something else I learnt from doing this one and that is um, sewing mattress stitch up in variegated yarn I had a tremendous amount of difficulty um, when I did my first raglan because although yeah you go in a straight line you can follow the track of the, the stitching you should probably be able to see the better there just between the V's yeah that's all well and good on a solid and you can easily keep track of it but I think it was the variegated when, when you sew it when you do it on one side and then in the other and then you pull it tight it cinches it in so you lose your track now it's easier to keep track of your track on a solid yarn but when it's variegated for me anyway I found that really difficult and I kind of went off a bit and didn't do a very good job on one particular bit and I'm not going to show you it because I rescued it <laughs> Um, afterwards with some extra stitching but uh, it looks fine now but I learned my lesson there and what I did from then on in for the rest of the sewing up I used um, some ravel cord I have some nylon cord and basically before I'd start to join the sides up I basically tracked it was almost like a basting stitch um, that's basically what I did on both sides and then when I went to do the real sewing up I just took up the bast basting, the nylon cord as I was going and that helped tremendously um, but I really think that was only because it was um, variegated yarn and not um, solid that I had the difficulty because I certainly didn't have that difficulty first time round. Yes. <laughs> oh look at this. Remember that uh, Pam's recently been do doing all the spinning and I plucked out my spinning disc, what do you call it? Drop spindle, that's it. God, I can't even know what it's called. And that's what I came up with. It's not bad. But it, I'm so disappointed, really, because I, I do expect it to look like, I suppose, like a thicker version of that. The way that goes. But that's been done by machine, not by hand. And um, th somebody else said, oh, you need to apply that now before you use it. Why? Can I use it as it is? Why not? What's, what's wrong with that? I'll just knit it. With... But then again, what am I going to knit with that? It's only small. But still, I don't like the idea of doing something else with it. It was just enough just to do that twizzly thing. <laughs> oh, can you tell I'm dissatisfied? <laughs> Terrible. The next thing, I forgot to show you this last video and it's progress on the uh, baby blanket I'm making. Which way around am I working? Okay. I'm working this way around, so that'll be the front then, won't it? So there it is so far. What's pulling that? It's just the way the yarn is. Yeah. 
pop it up the way, that's it. <clears throat> How much can you see there? I'm just looking through the gaps here. <laughs> can you see much more? Yeah, okay. Um, I can't wait for this to be finished. There's nothing wrong with the pattern. There's nothing wrong with the work. It's just, I can't say, but I'm not happy. Um, and I just can't wait for it to be finished. So I found what size I want to do. Stroller size, which is 35 inches square. Well, 35 inches. Uh, I know it's a rec based on a rectangular blanket, but this is square, isn't it? But I think one of the measurements is 35, and I'm nowhere near that yet. I've got about nine inches to go. Oh no. Oh. Um, this is a rough measurement. I'm not even on anything level here, because there's something underneath. Uh, yeah, but look. Again, this is a rough measurement. It's not exact. Oh, it's only 26 inches. So I've got I'm going to do it to 35, so it's nine inches left to go. And because I'm doing it in um, four ply baby yarn, which in the UK, well, what's the US equivalent to that? Is that fingering or sport? I always get them mixed up. It's one of the two. It's that weight and it's quite light, so it's taking a while to grow. I just want it over with already. Um, no, it's not the pattern, it's not the yarn, it's some negative associations with it at the moment but I can't wait for it to be done and yeah I've got the ends to sew as well I took my yarn needles downstairs so I could sew up um, yeah and I took the yarn needles downstairs so I could sew up the jumper and I forgot to bring them back up so every time I went to do sewing the ends there was no needles there I was like oh do it next time. Oh, do it next time. Oh, do it next time. And I still haven't done it. Um, I'm looking at my book here because I remember last time I said my book was somewhere else and I forgot to say something. And how can I forget that my younger son went to university? <laughs> I can't forget. He's been gone a month now. Am I missing him? Some ways, yes. In other ways, no. Because, like, for instance, the kitchen stays tidier for longer because sometimes he'll go in there and do his stuff and like you come and you're like will you clean up your mess we want to cook and he's like yeah in a minute but his in a minute is later or whatever is like much later than you know we need to use the kitchen for and that's really annoying so that bit i don't miss um Oh yeah, and he had a really, really good time in, in the States when he went to LA in July for three weeks. Um, yeah, and he, um, he never sent us a postcard, but like, he didn't need to because we had Snapchat. Now, you've probably heard a lot of that, about that recently because Pam's been on it. Now, I had Snapchat first of all in 2000, November 2013. I don't know where I saw it advertised or anything. But I remember downloading it and I remember telling my youngest son and a couple of friends and they were like, yeah, I ain't no one to play with. So in the end, I did end up deleting the app. Um, but for a while before my son went to the States in July, he'd been using it and he kept going Snapchat, Snapchat, Snapchat. So I re-downloaded I said like, what's that? Totally forgot. Until I downloaded it again, I went, oh, I used to have that. But no one was on it. So anyway, I... I I used it more as an observer, so kept up with his snaps, but I didn't really do anything with it. No, I do occasionally still do stuff. Um, I have bouts where I'll do a lot of stuff on Snapchat and then, um, then I'll go quiet for a while. But I used it more, I found it absolutely fantastic when he was in the States and he was like uploading the occasional video and um, he was not uploading it because it's only very brief, isn't it? Video or photo. And I was just looking at his snaps and then I think, oh, that's brilliant. So I'll go and show my husband. And we just basically share his experience. And it was like lots, of, I saw it as lots of mini postcards. And it was far better than a postcard. It was fantastic because certainly with the, the video element of it, she got the atmosphere. And it was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed that. Um, and of course, then Pam recently discovered it. And we've been 
quite a few of us have been playing with it and it's fun. Um, and I, I can see why she says she likes it better than Periscope, but for me, um, I can't speak for me, cat or catch, no, blab, because I've never used them. I signed up, but I never used them. But when, like, our internet connection is always pants, so every time there was an internet connection problem on Periscope, I thought it was our end completely. I'd never assumed it was anybody else having that issue. The other disadvantage I found was, um, say if you intend to do a broadcast, or anybody else intends to do a broadcast, they think, oh, well, I'll, I'll do a I'll broadcast for 10 minutes. That can become longer because of the interaction. So what you plan to broadcast is suddenly extended. Now, as a viewer with really pants internet connection, I can't commit to a, um, a broadcast or even like a catch up of a broadcast, which is only available 24 hours. Um, because I don't know how long it's going to be, um, or I didn't, I think they might have changed that. And I did find at one point, like you'd be watching it for so long, um, a catch up one. And then go back to it, and it start from the very beginning and you're like, eh. And then it's gone after 24 hours and sometimes you miss them. But then there are also the notifications. I turn a lot of notifications off on my phone because they annoy me and they drain the battery. Um, so of course I miss some that way as well. And same with Snapchat, I'll, I'll miss notifications there. You have to act, but I would prefer to just log in daily and see what's what. But again, it's the time element with the Periscope, especially the unknown time element. Whereas with Snapchat, it's instant, it's short, but the most 10 seconds long for each snap, that's it, that's perfect, you know? And I like that. Um, so yeah, thumbs up to Snapchat, because certainly because of that. And there's no like storage issues because like you don't keep everything. Well you can you can like download your photo before you've uploaded it or your little video or you can download your story but generally you just throw it out there and then it goes. Um although people can take screenshots of that. Um any photos. Because I've I've done a few with my son because they were really interesting photos. I took a strip a screenshot, it was really good. Um what else? I feel like I'm waiting for something, it's really weird. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been really intensely working on sewing up that jumper because I wanted to actually finish it. I'm terrible at sewing stuff up, so I'm quite happy I've done that. So I've mentioned Andy in the USA and uni. Oh, and I've gone and tidied away all the stuff he got me from Hobby Lobby because he got me... Um, if you saw, I think I might have posted it on Instagram, but I don't know if I posted it on Facebook as well. Well, he got me. Well, he never got me. He got me in so far as going in the store and getting it. I gave him the money for it. He didn't buy me it as a gift. Um, I just said whatever yarn. But I said, I love this yarn because I know it can't be shipped here unless somebody ships it to me. And I don't know anybody to ship it to me. So I said, just get a selection of yarns this weight. Um... I think I got worsted weight because DK is plentiful over here. Um, and I didn't want to limit him on the colours because I could have gone to the website and said, oh, I want that colour, and I want that colour, I want that colour, that colour. And he'd get to the store and couldn't find them. You know what I mean? Because each store might carry different um, colours and stuff. So I just said, just whatever, whatever you can get. But the only thing I was specific about was some crochet hooks that I saw. And they look really nice and I saw them on Margaret Alanda's video which is um I can't remember which video it was it was a while ago and they're called rainbow crochet hooks in the wooden and I had to um get my conversion chart out because I couldn't say well I want a four millimeter I want a five millimeter I had to put it in letters because I knew for a fact that the letters would be more dominant over in the states so I said get me a G an H and did I say I I can't remember, but I've got three sizes anyway. So he was really good um, getting that for me. Lovely lad. But yeah, he had, the, he had a really good time. And I said, well then, do you think you see yourself living out there in LA? And he went, oh no, it's just too busy. But I think what he was yearning for, because he was around people all the time, he just wanted some time away to be on his own for a while. Well, some time out. I think he might be getting that at uni, because although he's with a lot of people, um, what you can see from his snaps anyway on Snapchat. Um, 
he does get to have time on his own so he can like just decompress so I think that's better for him okay yes couple of things I was going to mention swatches you know stitches and rows just to see um, Uh, you try and match your gauge for a garment that you might be making or like in my case on sweater 101 it's mine so it doesn't matter but say for example I was doing a knitting pattern and yes for that um, that raglan jumper I was actually using the construction methods of an actual knitted pattern and the reason why I didn't knit it from that pattern was because I couldn't match the gauge <laughs> I want so I thought I'm going to use my own gauge but I'll use the construction methods for that and I'll piece it all together and make up and it worked anyway obviously because you've seen it but what I found rather strange was like I've seen loads of people offering advice on the internet about gauge swatches where you um, you do so many stitches and so many rows and then they suggest you wash the swatch so, because the stitches will either relax or they expand, you know, they'll do, they'll do something different to when they're dry, yeah. So you get like um, an after-washed effect, so you know what they do afterwards. Because obviously, the thing you don't want to do is knit something. What you think is to gauge, put it in the washing machine, have a stretch, uh, shrink or stretch. But then it got me thinking because, like. I was looking at a knitting pattern and it said work, in, work to ten and a half inches. Well, if you've already done a swatch based on a swatch, if you've already done a swatch that you have washed and you've got the gauge from that washed swatch and then you're measuring, you're knitting something that's for like ten and a half inches, it's dry and it's still on the needle, it's not going to be the same, is it? So what's the point in washing it in the first place? So yeah, I um yeah that, that made me wonder. So maybe you shouldn't wash swatches, especially if you get given directions therefore to do so many inches, because you're not exactly going to cast off and then chuck it in the washing machine, then bring it back out and get a measure. Like oh no, I'll pick up them stitches and start again. <sighs> you're not going to do that, are you? So I don't see the point of washing them now. Unless it's for information, you can see before washing, after washing, is there much difference? Factor that in when you're knitting dry. Yeah. Just my little rant off with. The other thing is, I'm getting some emails. Amy. Amy Gibson. Is it Amy's Woolly World of Creations? Amy's Woolly World. I just know her as Amy. I don't read the rest of it. Green Feather. Yeah. She's psychic. I'm absolutely certain she's psychic. Did you know you were psychic, Amy? Um. Because on Facebook there was an inbox and she said 7th, not 7th, 2nd of September she wrote it. She said something nice is coming your way. I went, oh, okay. Well the following week, 10th of September, something began to happen that we've been waiting a long time for. And it was like, how did she know something nice was coming our way? I mean it did end up with something nice but my goodness how did she know that? That was amazing. And that was like a week. So she's psychic. You've been collecting a few things <laughs> recently, just collecting. You know when you have these random thoughts? Like, I always wonder why on earth do people lean in for photos? <laughs> I think it's to do with the cameras in the old days, which I don't know, weren't wide or whatever. I have no idea because I don't we did I don't think we had a camera when we were younger. Uh, or my parents did have one and someone borrowed it and never given it back or something like that. But it was a, I, I do remember people saying, lean in a bit, when the group photo and everybody's going like that. So now people go, and there's a few people, they lean inwards and they don't need to. 
I just think that's hilarious. And then the th things people say. I'm terrible for it. I'll see CJ's lad his tea and it's all over his mouth. And I'm like, if we've seen your face, well, of course he hasn't seen his face. There's no mirror in front of him. And the other thing is like, um, I thought to myself, well, who else are you gonna think to? Now, if you said it to yourself, that's different because people sometimes talk to themselves. I do. So like, oh, I said to myself, yeah. Oh, I said to him, I said to her, I said to myself, but when you think, you, of course you think to yourself. So I thought to myself, <laughs> who else are you gonna think to? ESP? <laughs> and me knew somebody who would like prefix everything. Well, I turned round and I said, so, were they not facing the person they were talking to? Do they always have to turn around to say whatever it was they wanted to say? I think that's really funny. And the other thing I always find funny is, um, say if um, a member of the royal family visit an area and reporters are talking to like the locals who are interacting with them and um, the people tend to say to the reporter, oh, they're just normal about the royal family. It's like, well, what did you expect them to be, like, alien? <laughs> yeah. Is there any funny things you come across? Do you know, I can't think of loads. I've written some down somewhere and I can't find them. They're probably buried in my notes section of my iPod, but uh, that's, that's a few of them. What people saying they're just crack me up because my mind is giggling to itself <laughs> well that's everything I'll finish the video here and I haven't done any knitting today so I think I'll do that yep right that's everything so I shall wrap it up here and get this uploaded I will speak with you another time take care everyone bye bye